Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be counting down my top 10 historical novels of all time. Now, I made one rule for myself when I made this video. Um, A, it had to be actual historical events we're talking about. It couldn't be something like King Arthur or Robin Hood or anything weird like that. And B, we're going to actually try to keep it to 10 books this time. Or as close to 10 as we can. Anyway, this was a video that has been a special request. People have been asking for this on the channel a lot. You know I read a lot of historical fiction. A lot of you have been asking, what are your favorites? Here we go. So I spread out all of my favorite historical fiction titles on the floor, and I'm going to like, okay, I'm going to go through them, and I'm going to pick the top 10. And then I realized there's more than 10 here that I got to put on the list. And then I ended up with... Uh, 15 and then I'm like no, but then these others have to be on the list too. So then it was like 17 then I'm like no But there's all these other great authors that I want to show you So then it became it became like a top 20 and then it was then there was like even more And so then it became a top 25 So I lied to you when I said it was gonna be an actual top 10 list We're gonna do 25 books and I'll give a brief explanation of each book sometimes they're gonna be series like they, I'm gonna hold up a book and say this is the whole series counts. Um, and then there's going to be three or four authors that make the list several different times. Because they have several different series that I love. Not only that, but... Uh, well, let's just get started. Let's just get started. So, my top 25 historical fiction novels of all time, beginning with... Coming in at number 27, we have the Pulitzer Prize winning... Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier. That's right. I love this book. Civil War. This is a great Civil War book. If you like, if you like grim and gritty Civil War stuff, here you go. Now let's get to um, number 26. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dior. This is a great World War II novel, just gripping. Check this one out if you want to read a cool World War II book. Okay, let's, number 25, the top 25 now. Rebel by Bernard Cornwell. This is book one in the Nathaniel Starbuck Civil War series. There's four books in the series. Like I said, if, it, if it's a series that I love, I'm only going to show you one book, and then I'll briefly talk about the whole series as a whole. Nathaniel Philbrook, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel Starbuck, not Nathaniel Philbrook, Nathaniel Starbuck, Chronicles. He's a Confederate soldier in the Civil War, realizing he might be fighting for the wrong side. Number 24, The Guard Ship by James L. Nilsson. If you love pirate books, especially pirate books that deal with early American history, especially like up in uh, Rhode Island and Narragansett and uh, along the East Coast there and pirates, this is a great series. I think there's three books in the Guard Ship series by James L. Nilsson. Awesome, awesome stuff. Number 23, Dissolution by C.J. I don't know if you can see that. Dissolution by C.J. Sansom. God, the, the glare on that is extraordinary. There we go. Dissolution by... Anyway, this is about a monk that solves murder mysteries in the time of King Henry the one that, the, you know, the King Henry that had all the wives and he beheaded them. You know, like Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour. Beheaded all of them, anyway. Emperor at the Gates by Con Igledon. I don't know if you can see the name there. Man, I shouldn't have. So Con Igledon wrote also, just so you know how to spell Con Igledon, there it is. Con Eagleton wrote this series about Caesar. He also wrote this series about the name of the War of the Roses. But I like the Caesar one slightly better, so that comes in at number 22. Number 21, of course, the great Patrick O'Brien with Master and Commander. There's 20 books in this series. I love them all. If you love... Um, 
the Napoleonic Wars and Battleships. There you go. Coming in at number 20, number 20, we have Neil Stevenson, Quicksilver, his Baroque cycle. Neil Steel Steve Stevenson has this Baroque cycle here that's got, you know, confusion. We'll pull them all out. Because I consider it just one big long book, System of the World. This trilogy is dope. If you want to get a lot of history on mathematics, oh, just anything. This guy packs more history into this series than pretty much the entire rest of my historical fiction collection combined. So if you want to get some great historical fiction, get this Quicksilver Baroque Cycle by Neil Stevenson. Number 19. One of my favorite westerns, Writers of the Purple Sage by Zane Grey. Great, great historical look at early Mormonism, especially southern Utah. Great look. And gunfighters, too. The gunfighter in this is as badass as Clint Eastwood. Number, um, I don't know where we're at here. We're somewhere between 20 and 10. We'll say this is 17. It is, um, Ruska by Edward Rutherford. Now, Edward Rutherford writes a lot of these big, huge historical epics about Russia, London, Paris, Tokyo, Ch uh, Hong Kong, uh, what else? Ireland. He's got a lot of, but the Russian, the Russia one was my favorite. So if you like James Michener, who may or may not also be on this list, if you like James Michener, you need to start reading Edward Rutherford. He is a great, great historical novelist. Let's see, number 16, Border Lords. This is part of um, Terry C. Johnstone's Titus Bass Mountain Man series. This is, um, he's known as Scratch the Mountain Man, and there's a trilogy, actually there's no, there's nine books, nine books in this Mountain Man series. So if you want to get ter uh, read a lot about mountain men, uh, Border Lords, um, the uh, uh, buffalo something uh, they're all on the back there uh wind talker there's a whole bunch of them there well there's nine exactly so if you like terry c johnstone and westerns this mountain man you'll learn everything you need to know about mountain men number 15 or 14 or maybe 16 roma by stephen sailor a great book about Rome. It's, it's in the style of James Michener and Edward Rutherford. Stephen Saylor does a great series, a three, a trilogy about Rome, and it's great. Book. This is book one. It's a trilogy about Rome. So get that if you like things about Rome. Number oh, this is number fourteen, fifteen, or sixteen too. Just anything by Louis L'Amour. This is my favorite Louis L'Amour book, The Californios. Anything by Louis L'Amour, just plug that in to your historical fiction reading, and you and you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Number fourteen or thirteen, The Last Kingdom, The Saxon Tales by Bernard Cornwell. Yeah, there's about thirteen books in The Saxon Tales. This is book one. Maybe you recognize it from the TV show The Last Kingdom. It's about Vikings. Very very great historical fiction novel about Vikings, and Bernard Cornwell may or may not, let's see, this is the second, this is his second series on my list. Maybe there will be another one of his series on my list. Okay, Ken Follett, The Fall of Giants. This is part of a trilogy, a Ken Follett trilogy that I've got right here. The Fall of Giants. It's about five different families, one from Russia, one from England, one from France, one from America. There's five families, and it tells their story, their epic story, as they fight through World War I and World War II and the Vietnam War. And it's a trilogy. It starts with the fall of giants. It's called the um, Book One of the Century Trilogy. If you like uh, that kind of epic family historical drama, I consider this is like Downton Abbey, but with a hell of a lot more action. And it's a trilogy. I got the others right there. Number 12, The Bastard, The Kent Chronicles 
by John Jakes. Let's see if you can see his name there. I've got the entire Kent Chronicles up there on my shelf. There's um, seven books in the Kent Chronicles, maybe eight books. It starts with The Bastard, and it takes us on a journey from one man's journey from uh, Europe as he migrates to America before the Revolutionary War, and then he fights in the Revolutionary War, and then his descendants fight in the Civil War. And so it's just a great, great epic look at one family's sort of forging of America. And it starts with The Bastard, one of my favorite titles of any book I own in my entire book collection. Wilbur Smith, Birds of Prey. There are so many. I mean, Wilbur Smith has probably written 30 adventure novels set in old Africa. So if you like stuff, pirates, African stories, the Congo, the jungle, the deserts of the Sahara, and especially pirates, there's a lot of pirate stuff in this. And it's all historically accurate. And he writes stuff about Africa, South Africa, and whether it's ancient Egypt stuff, which he's got some ancient Egypt stuff, or some... Uh, Pirate Day stuff, or even he's got some African novels set during World War One and World War Two. They're very good. He's he's a prolific author, probably forty, and I've got all of them. But Birds of Prey was my favorite of the group because it's kind of about the slave trade and uh, piracy and stuff like that. Oh, so let's get to the very top ten. This is what you came for: the top ten. Another Bernard Cornwell series, the Sharps Rifles. This is book one in Sharp's Rifles. It is Sharp's Tiger. There's probably 20 books in the series, and he's coming out with a new one called Sharp's Assassin. That should be out in December. And it is my favorite Bernard Cornwell series by far. If you want to watch the BBC series starring Sean Bain, do it, because they filmed every one of these books, and Sean Bain stars as Sharp. The Lieutenant Sharp of the English Army as they fight Napoleon. Great series. The Killer Angels by Michael Shara about the Battle of Gettysburg. This one won the Pulitzer Prize too. Killer Angels. I, in fact, I'm going to go visit Gettysburg just because of this book. So later in September, I'm going back east to visit Gettysburg. So then we've got... Diana Gabaldon. I didn't know whether to put Diana Gabaldon books in here because they're sort of time travel. They're sort of science fiction fantasy time travel books. But they but they they're a lot about history too. So I kind of broke my rule just but I love this series, the Outlander series. This is book 3. No, this is book 2, which was my favorite book in the series. Book 1 was my book 1 is actually titled Outlander, my least favorite book in the series. Book 2 is my favorite book in the series. But all of these books have a lot of Scottish history and early American pre-revolutionary war history. These books are dynamite. And man, this lady writes big thick books and she goes into a lot of detail about a lot of historical stuff. When they are great Book number nine, no, eight. Book number eight, The Winds of War. Also, there's a second novel in the series called War and Remembrance, but they are two very thick, thick novels of World War II and one family's journey through World War II from about five years before it starts up until when it ends. These, this, this Winds of War, along with War and Remembrance by Herman Woke, the best World War II novels ever written. Number seven. Or six. Yeah, this is number six. And this is The First Man of Rome by Colleen McCullough, her Masters of Rome series. In fact, I wouldn't even be reading these right now if someone on my channel hadn't suggested it. And if you followed my channels, I've read about three or four of these now and reviewed them for my channel. And there's about eight in the series, I think. But it's all about Caesar and his rise to power. And it, they're so thick and detailed and just delicious to read. And this is book one. Um, but like I said, there's about eight books in the series all about Caesar. So uh, I thank my viewers for turning me on to this series, which ends up being my sixth ranked historical fiction novel of all time. Top five, top five. Got another John Jakes. This is the North and South trilogy. There's North and South, Love and War, Heaven and Hell. 
It's all about the Civil War. If you want to watch the miniseries starring Patrick Swayze and a bunch of other really famous actors and actresses from the 1980s, that's also a great miniseries to watch. It is called North and South Dynamite Miniseries, and they follow the books really closely, too. So John Jake's North and South trilogy, the most you can, you will learn more about the Civil War from this trilogy than you ever thought you could know. Surprising things that you didn't knew, think you knew. Okay, number four, Alaska by James Michener. I, I mean, this is a detailed history of Alaska from the prehistorical age of dinosaurs and mastodons all the way up until the Alaska pipeline was put in in the 1970s. I lived in Alaska. I grew up in Alaska for most of my youth, young adult life. So therefore, I have an affinity for anything about Alaska. Now, James Michener's written a lot of historical epics like Hawaii, Texas, Chesapeake, Centennial, uh, the source, I mean, a, a lot of them. Alaska is by far the best. Top three, top three. You knew this one was coming. Shogun. Shogun by James Clavell. Oh my God. This is, this is, this, although this is steeped in reality and the history and uh, mythology and habits of the old ancient Japanese people, though it's steeped in that. When you read it, you almost feel like you're reading a science fiction novel where some dude was plopped down on an alien planet and just has to figure out the weird, the weird landscape and customs of the people that he's... Because it's, this, is, this is at once beautiful, harrowing. It's just almost a perfect novel, Shogun. You learn more about Japanese history than you ever thought you wanted. Okay, my second, top two, my second favorite historical novel of all time. It's another Ken Follett book, Pillars of the Earth. Probably one of the top five biggest selling novels of all time. Everybody knows about it. Most of you have read it. I don't think I really need to say anything more than it's about. A bunch of people in southern England trying to build a cathedral. Now, you'd think that that would be boring, <laughs> but it is the most exciting historical novel ever written, ever written, with the exception of one other one, which is my top historical novel of all time, and that is Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry, the best Western novel ever written, the best historical fiction novel ever written. Not only that, but probably tied for number the number one novel I've ever written with The Stand. The Stand has remained my top favorite. Stephen King's The Stand has remained my top favorite novel of all time. With Lonesome Dove, a close second. But with every time I reread this and reread The Stand, this one almost has surpassed it. But I would say they're tied at this point for my favorite novel of all time. Again, another Pulitzer Prize winning book. So that is my top 10 slash, what did we have, 25 or 30? I can't remember. We had a lot, we had a grip of historical novels. So if you didn't find a historical novel that you might wanna read and enjoy on this list, I can't help you, I can't help you folks.